Good morning viewers. My name's are uh, teacher Betty Bosa. I'm going to take you through all level chemistry, the topic known as molar concept. This molar concept will include balancing chemical equations, finding out the percentages, empirical formula, mole concept, molarity, STP or standard temperature and pressure, and RTP, room temperature and pressure, enthalpy changes, and lastly, solubility. We are going to begin with balancing chemical equations. Laws governing writing a chemical equation. Before you start on balancing an equation, you have to understand these laws. The first law is the reactants are written on the left hand side while the products on the right hand side. What do we mean? Let us consider burning carbon in limited oxygen to give us carbon monoxide. Always these elements, carbon and oxygen, are the reactants are written on. We said on the left hand side. And then carbon monoxide is the product which is written on the right hand side. Rule number two, when you are balancing an equation, the atoms of the reactants must balance with those of the product. If we go back to our example, our reacting equation, burning carbon in limited oxygen to give us carbon monoxide, when you look at the reactant side, we have one carbon atom. Come also look at the product side, one carbon atom. This means this Two atoms are balancing. Then we go to oxygen. How many oxygen atoms do we have? You always look at this value here as a subscript and also look at the front. If there is nothing, it means there is one. So one times two times one, we have two atoms of oxygen on the reactant side. Let us go on the product. One, there is one here, multiply by the one in the front. 1 times 1, we have one atom of oxygen. But remember, on the reactant side, we had it too. How do we balance the one on the product? Always, we look for the value that we shall multiply by the one to get two. That value is two, because one times two is two. What you have multiplied with, always bring it in front of the molecule. Do not put it down here, it will change the molecule to carbon dioxide. Neither do you divide the molecule. These are not allowed. Always introduce it at the front of the molecule. What does this mean? It means that two times carbon, two times oxygen. Again, my carbon has changed by two. Come back to the reactant side to balance it. So I also introduce a two. Don't put it down here, it will mean a carbide, which is not correct. Yet we want two moles of carbon. Therefore, this equation is balanced. Three, after balancing the chemical equation, we must, each element or a compound must have a steady symbol. What do they mean? You have to know what carbon is in its state. We have three states. We have a liquid represented by a small letter L. We have a gas represented by a small letter G. We have aqueous where we can get a compound, dissolve it in water, and it becomes a solution. This one is represented by a small A and a Q. Then lastly, we have a solid which is represented by a small s. Now back to our equation. Two carbon atom plus oxygen molecule to give us two carbon monoxide molecule. Carbon is in what state? An example of carbon is charcoal. Charcoal is in a solid state. So we put small s. Oxygen is in gaseous state. And carbon monoxide is in a gaseous state. Make sure you write the states in line with the equation, not below the equation. Suppose you have written like this, 
and this is the line and right below here this is not correct it has to be in line with the equation we are going to have a few examples on balancing chemical equations others will be found on this on the website digitalteachers.co.ug lower cases so for the example we have been given such an equation whereby butane is combusted in oxygen to give us carbon dioxide and water. When you are balancing, you have to look at each individual atom. We are beginning with the carbon. How many carbon atoms do we have on the reactant side? Four times one is four. Come on this side, how many do we have? One times one is one. So we have to make sure that on the product side, we have a total of four carbons. I told you whatever you are introducing, put it in front. So to make four, we have to multiply one by four. Next, we go to hydrogen. How many hydrogen atoms do we have on the reactant side? We have eight times one, which is eight. So we go to the product. How many do we have? We have two times one, which is two. So we always have to look for a factor that we shall multiply by two to get eight. So that factor is four. If I introduce a four here and I multiply, I'll get eight. So what you have multiplied with, we said you bring it in front of the molecule. This means four times two is equal to eight. Now let us come to oxygen. How many oxygen atoms do I have on the reactant side? I have only two times one, which is two. Come on the product. You have to look at the total number of oxygen on the product side. How many do I have on the carbon dioxide molecule? I have two times four, which is eight. I have to add it up to that of water, four times one, which is four, and the total will be 12. So remember, on the reactant, we had only two. Two times this is two. So two, I have to multiply it with it a value to give me a product of 12. What factor is that that is multiplied by 2 to get 12? The factor is 6. What you have multiplied with, bring it in front of the molecule. Therefore, my equation has balanced. Remember, we said each equation must have a stated symbol. Butane is in the gaseous form. Oxygen in a gaseous state. Carbon dioxide in a gaseous state, and lastly, water in the liquid state. Example number three copper plus nitric acid is equal to copper nitrate plus nitrogen dioxide and water. So when we look at this one, we have also to balance atom per atom, as I said earlier. When you look at copper, copper is one times one, which is one. And also on this side is one times one, which is one. Don't look at the value that is in the bracket, because this covers only the bracket. If I cover this, my two is only on the bracket. Now we go to nitrogen. How many nitrogen atoms do I have on this side? I have one times one, which is one. I come on this side, I have two times one is two, two times one is two. So I have two nitrogens in this molecule, and I come on this one, how many do I have? I have one times one, which is one. If I add up this, I'll get a total of three nitrogens. And always, you have to remember that when you want to balance the equation perfectly, you have to deal with even numbers. This has led us to the prime number. How do we fight this prime number? By multiplying this nitrogen one by two. If we multiply this nitrogen by two, we are going to get a total of four nitrogens. I told you, whatever you multiply with, bring it in front of the molecule. So now I have a total of four nitrogens. I come on this side. How many nitrogens do I have? Uh, we have one times one, which is one. So we need a total of four. I bring my four in front of nit nitric acid. 
Now back to hydrogen. How many hydrogens do I have? I have four hydrogens, but on this side I have two hydrogens. How? This is two times one. I change this two by, I multiply two by a two to get a four. Then whatever I've multiplied with, I told you, we put it in front of the molecule. Let us check the oxygen atoms. How many do we have on the reactants? We have three times four, which is equal to 12. Come on this side. How many oxygens do I have on copper nitrate molecule? I have two times three, which is six. Six times one is a six. I add on. On the nitrogen dioxide, how many do I have? I have two times two, which is four. I add on two times one, two, and the total is 12. Therefore, my equation balances. But remember, each equation must have a state symbol. Copper is in a solid state. For those who don't know copper, you know the copper wire is solid. So copper is in a solid state. Nitric acid is in aqueous state. When they react, they produce aqueous. Nitrogen dioxide is a gas, and water is a liquid. Now let us look at UNEB question. It appeared in 1987, number 12 of paper 1. The question is, ethane burns in oxygen according to the following equation. Two moles of ethane plus X moles of oxygen to produce Y moles of carbon dioxide and six moles of water. The value of X and Y in the equation are, you are given A, is X is equal to two and Y is equal to two. B, X is equal to seven and Y is equal to six. C, X is equal to seven and Y is equal to four. And then D, X is equal to four and y is equal to 6. Now can you pause and balance to see whether you will get the same answer as mine? Now check your answer to see whether it is the same as mine. How many carbon atoms do we have on the reactant side? We have two times two, which is four. Then on this side we have one times y. You assume you don't know why you, you don't have y in the front, so we should put four to balance the carbon. And this will be one times four. Now we go to hydrogen. How many hydrogen atoms do we have on this side? Six times two is equal to 12. Come on this side, two times six is equal to 12. Hydrogen balances. Let us go to the oxygen. How many oxygen atoms do we have? We have two times x, of which we don't know. Two x is equal to two times four, which is eight, plus one times six, is equal to 6. So my 2x is equal to 14. Therefore, x is equal to 14 divided by 2. The answer is 7. So I have 7 here. When I come to the objectives, I have x as 7 and y as 4. My answer is C.